Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to talk about keeping your cool. Well, maybe not keeping your cool or my cool, but keeping your equipment cool, your boosters and other pieces of electrical equipment that, believe it or not, can heat up. So let me go ahead and we'll get started and I'll explain what I mean by that. Have you ever been in a situation where you've, uh, you know, operated your layout or a friend's layout with him a few times and everything worked great? And then uh, come a big operating session day when you've got lots of trains running and, you know, after a little while, the list of the layout shuts down, the boosters shut down. And then they start up again and then it shuts down again. So you guys are all running around looking for shorts that are causing these problems and you can't find them. So what's the problem? Well, heat. Heat is the enemy of electronics. And as a result, when companies like Digitrax and MRC and NCE design their equipment, they design it knowing that all of the electrical components in these little metal boxes are going to heat up. They just do it. You know, it's a fact of life. Electric components do heat up. And it can eventually heat up to the point that it can do permanent damage to the equipment and the circuits inside. So what they do is they build in a circuit that checks the temperature all the time, and if it gets too hot, it shuts down. So it's a temperature-dependent circuit breaker. And that can cause havoc, because under normal operations, you might be operating without any problems. But then you get a bunch of trains running, and all of a sudden there's a lot of electrons flowing through these guys, and they get hot, and they shut down. Now, the manufacturers tell you this, but it's in the fine print, you know, hidden in the manual somewhere, that in reality, a 5 amp booster like this one right here will only work continuously at about 3 amps. You know, you can probably get away with 4 to 5 amps periodically at peak times for just a, a few minutes, but you got to get it back down again so it will cool off or else it's going to shut down. Now, and I know it's in the manual. I've seen it in the Digitrax manual, and I've talked with the people at Digitrax about it and other companies, and it is a known factor. And it's so well known that companies like MRC, when they designed this Prodigy Advanced system, look right here. There's a small fan built in right here to help keep their systems cool, so they'll keep running without any problems. So what can you do so that your system won't shut down and so that you can keep heat build up down and extend the life of all of your equipment. Well, let me show you a few things that you can do short of redesigning your system. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of things that you can do. First off, very simple. One thing you can do is take a simple little fan like this, and it's got a little switch on the back for dual uh, speeds, and you can just plug this in and hook it up and point this at the back of your equipment, okay? Or just so that it blows over your equipment. And with something like this running and blowing over your equipment, you can run all day without any problems at the full 5 amps, or very nearly uh, 5 amps, without any issues whatsoever. And this is something that a lot of people do. Um, another thing you can do, and, and I've done this on a number of occasions, you notice that on the back of Digitrax equipment, they have these large fins, okay? Now these fins are part of the heat sink mechanism. They form the back of the case, and they take and absorb the heat that's generated on the inside, and they radiate it through all of these little fins here. So it's a very efficient way of cooling the system down. They still won't run for more than about, you know, three amps continuously. Even if you've got an 8 amp booster or a 10 amp booster, problems are it's going to build up the same amount of heat and it's going to shut off at about the same time. So you're not going to be running at 8 amps or 10 amps. You're going to be running at 3 amps continuously unless you can overcome the heat problem. So the fans, they're a quick and dirty way to take care of this. Another option that I've been using for a long time, and I've recommended to friends of mine and shown them how to do it, and that is to add a fan to the back of their Digitrax boosters. A friend of mine, Ron Hale, uh, his Blue Ridge and Allegheny layout, we run all day long, or well, three hours at a, at a stretch anyway, with one DCS240 rated at 8 amps. And the reason we're able to get away with it is he has a small fan that blows directly on the back of these. So let me show you how that's done. Now, 
what you need is a small fan, and this is one that I got from All Electronics, and I'll hold it up so that you can see what's printed on it. You can get the number and uh, everything available as far as the uh, size and the like, so that should give you an idea. You can pause this uh, video and take a close look if you want. And basically it's an 80 by 80 millimeter by 25 millimeter thick, and these are called muffin fans. These are the same fans, you know, that you see on the back of, of desktop computers. And they're there to cool off the electrical components, you know, literally, uh, for the most part on the power supply, but the rest of the system as well. So you could go with something that small. And what I've done is, let me show you. I have one here that I've already rigged up. And what I did, I, I just had some um, two millimeter aluminum wire handy, and I just ran it through here. You can see where I ran the, uh, the wire through, and I bent it over here at a 90 degree angle. So you can see that real clearly. And I put two of those in, you know, one on each side here at the top. And this sits right over the fins here on the back of this Digitrex booster. Okay? So, then, let me turn it on. You can hear it running. Okay. That fan is blowing cooling air over these fins. So this unit is being cooled continuously. Ouch. God. I have to be careful with these things. So this fan is blowing uh, cooling air continuously over these fins. So this would probably run without any problem continuously at 5 amps. And these fans are going to do a great job cooling it. All you have to do, you know, is hook this up to the power strip or outlet that you have your boosters uh, plugged into. And when you turn them on, they'll come on and it will run perfectly. No problems whatsoever. And this one's a little bit noisy, but it's been laying around here for about five or six years. So it'll probably, you know, it'll probably settle down and uh, be a little bit quieter after it's um, had its run in for a little while. But that's a very easy proposition. And all I've done... Okay, so this fan right here is rated at, I think, 12 volts DC. But I've got a little 9 volt uh, DC uh, uh, transformer, plugs into a wall outlet, and it runs it uh, fairly well. Uh, you could run it at 12 volts, or it might even go as low as 6. I don't know. I've never tried that. But I typically run these things with uh, whatever transformer I've got around. So I've just got this little transformer hooked up directly here to the uh, fan, and um, got it protected with, you know, the splices with heat shrink tubing. And all I have to do is plug it in, and I'm up and running. And I keep these plugged into the same uh, strip, power strip that I use to power most of my equipment. Um, another option that you can do is build a box. And I would show it to you. I've got one, and I'll show you a photo of it here in a minute. But it's too hard for me to get to it and try to videotape it because it's underneath the layout and built in. And, you know, it would be a pain in the neck to try to get down there and show it to you. But basically, it's just a wooden box with a plywood uh, with a plexiglass front. And what I did was, I took one of these fans, cut a hole in the side of the box, and put this on it. And then uh, All Electronics makes these plastic filter kits for these muffin fans. And there's the uh, information on this one. And, you know, it's very similar to the ones that you see on the back of computers. And it has a little foam filter built in here. So I can, you know, take that foam out, clean the dust off that accumulates, and put it back in. So it helps another problem. It helps dust from, uh, keep dust from accumulating on those heat sinks. Because if dust accumulates here, it will decrease the efficiency, the cooling efficiency, of these fins. And, you know, the same goes for any of these uh, NCE lens in any of the other types of systems that don't have fins. They very often, they, they typically design those units uh, so that the case itself is, is a heat sink and it radiates heat out. So anytime you blow air across those fins or across those cases, it's going to help with cooling. Now one thing you can do though is, so I've used these little uh, muffin fans on the outside of a wooden box and, you know, put the uh, put the booster and, and the power supply and all of that stuff inside of it and, you know, put a, a few uh, aeration holes at the other end and just let it blow. 
and it cools the, uh, the entire inside of the box continuously and prevents heat buildup. Now, if you want something a little bit bigger, how about this big boy? This one, a friend gave it to me. It's a big, uh, oh, I'd say it's about a five inch across uh, cooling fan. This is rated at 120 volts and it can really pump some air. So this is something you can, you know, you can size it to fit the box that you have. And uh, that's one thing that I recommend putting your equipment in some sort of enclosure for two reasons. One, it's gonna keep, you know, heat from building up uh, inside these once you've got a fan blowing in there. And it's also gonna keep dust from accumulating on all of your equipment and parts of the circuits. So that's something that's, that's important to think about when you're you know, putting your system together. It also prevents uh, kids from fiddling with those uh, AC uh, connections that you might have exposed on your uh, power supply. And you know, it always concerns me when I go to people's houses or to train shows and I see power supplies with, you know, 120 volt AC wires just right out there in plain sight for some kid to come up and touch and say, what's this daddy? So what you can do then is use a fan blowing on your equipment all in one place together or wherever you've got them located. Or you can rig up a system like I did this morning in a, about five minutes that will blow air across your uh, the back of your system and keep it cool. Or you can put it in a box with a muffin fan and you know a filter on the outside so that it's protected from dust and it cools the air inside the box and blows directly across you know your DCC components and power supply and that's going to help keep it operating for a lot longer years it's going to prevent those uh, unexpected shutdowns when you've got a lot of people having fun on your layout and you know it's going to just help in the long run with the efficiency of the system itself. So give that a try and let me know how it works for you. Take it easy now, stay healthy, and avoid that nasty virus. Uh, and, you know, I'll see you the first of the week, hopefully, with a bonus video. Bye now.